Good morning everyone. This video will be all about alliteration, assonance and sibilance, three key poetic techniques. I'll put a link below to the slides in case you want them and a link to other key technique videos too. Now all of these techniques are quite similar. They're all to do with the sound of the words that you are using or that are being used in the text that you're looking at. First off, let's look at alliteration. Alliteration is simply the repetition of a consonant sound in a series of words. An example is red rabbits run rapidly. Note it repeats the consonant sound r at the beginning of each word. Now keep in mind that it's not to do with the letter, it's to do with a sound. So garden gnomes, while both words begin with a G, it's not alliteration. But funny photo is, it's to do with the sound, not the letter. Now a common myth is that the words all have to be right next to each other, but that's not true. Take a look at this example from Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven. Doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. It repeats the D sound, and it sounds a lot more mature than the childish Red Rabbit example from before. So what's the effect of alliteration? Well, that all depends on the context in which it's used. The harsh D sound in The Raven is supposed to emphasize the dull and dreary atmosphere of the poem. However, in Daniel Don't Do That, the harsh D sound is supposed to seem short, sharp, and authoritative, just like the nature of the statement. It's a warning. So there's no easy answer for the effect of alliteration. It all depends on the meaning of the words being used. That said, generally plosive sounds such as P, B, G, T, and D can sound quite harsh and blunt. They're quite good for emphasizing something with negative connotations. More fricative sounds such as th and v or more breathy sounds such as h are a bit lighter and a bit more soothing. Note that I'm saying generally. These aren't hard and fast rules, they're generalizations. So pause the video and have a look through these examples on the right. See if you can identify which are the alliterative letters. And bonus points if you could note down the effect of the alliteration in each example too. Assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds within a line. Out of the three techniques that we're looking at today, these are probably the hardest to spot and probably the most frequently missed. Now let's visit our friend Edgar Allan Poe again in his poem The Bells for an example. Hear the mellow wedding bells. Now the repetition of this E sound in the middle of the final three words in the quotation is an example of assonance. It's a repeated vowel sound. Now, assonance usually occurs within the word itself, which makes it quite difficult to spot. And also, you've got the fact that each vowel, A, E, I, O, and U, can each be pronounced at least two different ways. So the E in here and the aren't pronounced in the same way as the E in mellow, wedding, and bells. So what's the effect of assonance? Well, alliteration and sibilance crop up everywhere. Newspaper headlines, company names, mottos, you name it. Assonance gets forgotten about quite a bit and is usually mainly analysed in poetry. Usually it's used to increase the internal rhyme in a line or maybe to improve the flow or the rhythm of a line. And of course, there are other uses and effects too. So pause the video and have a look through these examples on the right. See if you can identify the use of assonance in the lines on the right. Bonus point if you can identify the effect of the assonance in each particular example. And finally, 
sibilance. Sibilance is the repetition of the s sound in a sentence or a line. It can be at the beginning of words, such as silly sausages. It can be within words, such as face it, you're a decent dancer, Grace. Or at the end of words, yes, this is glass. Or it can be a mixture of all three, such as, yes, I must dance in San Francisco. Now, some people even include the sh and ch sounds in sibilance too. So, what's the effect of sibilance? Similar to alliteration, it depends on the context of a sentence. Repeating the s could represent a whispering sound, reinforcing a sense of quiet. It could evoke the hiss of a snake and represent evil and slyness or anger, amongst many other things. It all depends on the context of the sentence that the sibilance is in. Pause the video and have a look through these examples on the right. See if you can identify which are the sibilant letters. And bonus points if you can note down the effect of the technique in each example too. But before you start, be careful of words that end in S. Sometimes they're pronounced as a S and sometimes as a Z. So just be careful, it's the S sounds that are actually sibilant. And you've got the answers here. Give yourself a mark and see how many that you got right. Why not challenge yourself? Pause the video and read through Annabelle Lee, a poem by Edgar Allan Poe, and see if you can spot the examples of alliteration, assonance, or sibilance, as well as the effect of each technique in the context that it's used. And now that you understand the three techniques, why not take some time to add them to your revision cards? Remember, revision cards always work best when you write them yourself rather than buy them. What I would do is write the name of the technique on one side of the revision card, then add the definition and examples to the back. These work great for revision where you can hold up the side that's got the technique on and you can try and guess the definition or vice versa. Really good for testing yourself or good for testing a partner. And that's all for today's video. I do hope you found it useful and if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching and happy revising.